Now, I couldn't possibly know who you're thinking of, right? But there's this new technology that's really cool. I'm going to try it with you. Okay, hold on one second. Okay. Right now, uh, uh, quickly, how tall are you? Do you know? Five, two and a half. Okay. And... Okay, that's weird. Wait, what's your birth month? January. January. Okay, uh, it takes one second, one second. Okay, we've got a match. Okay, this is weird. It says like right now at this time, you'd be thinking of Aunt Dor Dorothy? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. My Aunt Dorothy. <laughs> Wait, what? <laughs> In this time of technology and social media and all that stuff, it's hard to have true privacy. But think of somebody okay. that I couldn't possibly know, even if I was to search for Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, but if I was to look you up on Facebook or social media, I couldn't possibly know who that person would be. Okay. All right, so I want you to think of that person. So here's the thing, this is like some magic technology stuff, right? I got this access to this special app here. All right, cool. Let's see, we're here. What time is it? How tall are you? Okay, how tall are you? How tall are you? Six, three. Six, three. Cool. Just give me one second. Oh, just one second. Okay. It says that at this right at this moment, right at this time and place, you would be thinking of Zoe. What the hell? Are you thinking of Sam? <laughs> it says here that you're thinking of Katrina Mitchell. Oh shit! <laughs> oh, it says that right now at this time and place, you would be thinking of Max. What the hell? Right now, at this time and place, you would think of Joey? How did you do it? What's your secret? Technology. Or, or not. What? How did you do that? I got an app for that. <laughs> Wait, what's the app called? <laughs> you want to see it? Yeah. The app's called Nothing. <laughs> How did you do that? That's crazy. It threw me off when you turned the phone around. <laughs> I know, I was like, oh, uh. All right, guys, these next two tricks are like a two for one. Although they both use the same principle, the presentations are completely different. And if you know good magic, you know that it's all about the presentation at the end. That's all the spectators have to see and watch and remember. So the first one, probably one of my all-time favorite presentations. I think I love this so much because it addresses a very important issue, an issue me and Rand have talked about for a while lately, and it's technology and magic. Everybody thinks that we've got secret pens with cameras in them and decks of cars with, you know, readers and all this technology and iPhones and tablets and earpieces and eyepieces and it's crazy. Anyway, we went on, uh, on a mission to create an effect that says that we are using technology that they don't have. So here's what happens. Uh, we asked someone to think of someone from their, uh, their life that we couldn't possibly know by looking at their Facebook or Instagram or Twitter or online about them anywhere. Once they're happy they have a, someone in mind uh, that we couldn't possibly know, we tell them we have access to some really great secret technology and it's an app and it's just for magicians. We bring out our phone, Rand opens up his phone, asks them a couple of uh, silly questions like how tall are you, when was your birthday, these types of things, and then kind of like punches in the, the address of where they are waits a second till it loads, scrolls up and goes, okay, so it says here at this time in this place that you'd be thinking of this person right now. And he names the person they're actually thinking in their head and they freak out. And of course they're very interested as they should be as to what this app is. So when Rand turns it around and shows that it's just an empty cell phone case and there's, there's not only a, no app, there's not even a phone there, uh, it gets spectators in this mindset of kind of the opposite of what they suspected before. In other words, at the beginning of the effect, they thought, well, this is, has to be technology. And at the end of it, they're arguing there's no way that this could have been technology. So we kind of turn that, that argument on its head and it's very, very powerful. It's really strong. If you have a phone with a case, you're gonna be able to do this right away. If not, you can run out and buy a cheap, one of those cheap rubber cases for like a buck or something. They're available everywhere and you'll love performing it. And uh, so let's get right to work on these two. Before we start, actually, I, it's weird because I'm having a little bit of deja vu. I don't know if you ever had that. It's yeah, weird. Have. You have? Yeah. Mm. I'm just having a weird deja vu for a second. I don't know. Mm. You ever have that? Yeah. So let me just write down what I think. Let me put that right here. All right. Sorry, I'm just distracted. But I mean, I've got to write something down here. We'll put this on the floor right here. 
no one can touch it. It's between us. Here's what I'd like you to do. You're gonna think of somebody from your life, someone that I couldn't possibly know. I'm just having weird deja vu. It's like, right, just one second. It's like you're about to tell me something. You're about to tell me you're, that you're thinking about albino. Oh my god. So I'm just having this weird deja vu. It's like, it's, I, I mean, it's like you're about to tell me you wrote down the name Blanca. Oh. Shit. Wow, that was so cool. You, you know what's really weird though? Is that I have no idea who, who you were thinking of and I never wrote anything down. I, I'm just... What the hell? <laughs> oh my gosh. That's really, you know what's really weird is that, I'm sorry, but I don't even know who you're thinking of. I never even wrote anything down. What would... well, how you got the name? That was awesome. <laughs> that was so cool. Well, thank Holy you so shit. much. Thank, thank you so you. much. Have a wonderful day. You too. Oh my God. Take it easy. Thank you. And the second one is called Deja Vu. It starts out with Rand getting deja vu. Right off the bat, he says he's got this weird sense of deja vu, takes out a paper and pen, says, I'm just gonna write something down just in case. He writes something down, makes it very important by putting it on the ground or giving it to a spectator or close by where he can get it easily. And then asks him and says, okay, I'm sorry, would you please just think of somebody from your life, anybody? They do. And Ran again says, you know what? This is so strange. I'm getting that deja vu again. He picks up the paper, opens it up, and reads what he wrote down before they were even asked to think of anybody and names the thought that they're, of the person they're thinking of. It's amazing, they can't believe it. And as soon as they calm down, Rand says, you know what's really strange is that actually I never even wrote anything down. And he shows that there's nothing on the paper, which is very cheeky and very powerful because it adds another surprise and a level of deception to this whole thing. I know you're gonna love it, it's very easy. We're gonna teach you all the techniques and all the tools that you already learned. If you've watched previous episodes of Conscious Magic, you may be halfway there already. In any case, we're gonna review and show you everything you need to get out there performing this one right away. This is Andrew Gerard's key accessory. Now we're in for a treat because Andrew did release this many years ago. It was very expensive and it was a very limited manuscript. But now we get all the work on it here on Conscious Magic. If you wanna bend a key, this is the ultimate way to do it. Andrew takes a spectator, has him sign a key, they take a rubber band and they put it around their wrist. Andrew holds onto the key with them and they start going through a process with their eyes closed, imagining that the key is becoming softer and softer. Wow, did it twice. Whoa! Wow. 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 That's wild. <laughs> Open your eyes. I no! Before. No way! Two, three, bend. <laughs> Isn't that what the weird? Heck? Okay, stop. Is this a real key? I don't know how this is possible, but our minds are really powerful, so. Like, I bent it, but I did. Like, I, it's, <laughs> that sounds so dumb. <laughs> but, wow, that is, look, this is actually bent. I bent that. I'll put this on my keychain. High five, nice. I love this, yeah, yeah. awesome. This next effect is called Dreamweaver by Paul Carnazzo. It's an incredible effect where you'll read the spectator's mind and tell them what dream they're thinking of. So imagine you're having this dream and close your eyes and imagine every sensation you might have while in this dream. The sights, the sounds, the smells, the taste, everything. And I just want to see if I can get some things here. There's definitely some good smells involved and uh, there's, also, there's also another sensation in your, in, in your belly, in your stomach. It's like as if it's... Uh, it's also, it's weird, your mouth is watering. Okay, I think I know what this is. This is, this is, this is definitely food. Yeah, it was. It's food, right? I was thinking about food. I was dreaming about food. Hello, Ran. My name is Anna. Nice to meet you. Hi, Anna. I had this crazy dream last night, and uh, I don't know about you, but do you remember a lot of your dreams? I sometimes remember. Sometimes? Okay, I wrote down a few dreams that people dream about. If uh, you dream about one of these, you know, just keep one in your head. Think about it. Don't tell me. Okay, you have it in your mind still? No. In this dream, are you, are you on a mountain? I am on a mountain. You're on a mountain? Wow. That's how you got it. Yeah. You did it. Breathe. 
<laughs> it took one sitting of just going over it once, of getting the rhyme and the mnemonics stuck in my head. It was pretty easy because it all made sense and had a correlation for me to understand. I think the trick is really easy to learn and it can be played up really big because it's mentalism and you're really getting into someone's thoughts. You know, you can make it about them and really play on that. You can really play on, oh, you know, you know, sights, smells, or even actions that you can connect to them. And I think it's a great mentalism effect that you can carry around on you anytime. Really easy to learn, really fun to play with. Do it at a party, do it at a strolling gig, doing it on stage, you know. I was very surprised that I learned the method really quickly because, you know, I would imagine mentalism is a lot harder, but this one was really easy to understand and something I can do right now. It'll make you so happy, you'll just want to take off all your clothes and jump in the water. Andrew Gerard has yet again simplified a classic and turned up the clarity dial to 10. His version of the Biddle trick has four distinct moments where the spectators react, each phase getting more impressive. Not only do you get this routine which you'll perform anytime, anywhere with a borrowed shuffle deck, you'll also get inspired by Andrew's thinking and approach to your magic tricks. This is the Biddling Around. Stop. Here? Yeah. Can you remember it? I'll show it to them. I'll show it to you. I don't want to see it. Okay. All right. So this is, uh, let's try it like this. Hold your hand out flat. I'm going to try and see if I can cut. Don't drop them, please. I'm going to see if I can, yeah, I'm going to try and cut to around where it was that you kind of said stop. I think I got within like two or three cards, maybe even four. The ace of diamonds, the ten of clubs, the two of diamonds, and the ten of hearts. Now don't tell me uh, which one, but just as to know, was the ten the ace, the two of the ten, one of these four? It was? I'm gonna put a card here on your leg. You can feel it, right? Okay, watch. Was it any of those three? The ace, the ten, or the two? No. It wasn't? No. It was the ten of clubs? Yeah. This is what's weird. Look, the ten's never there. It's what? not here, it's not anywhere. <laughs> Actually, it's in your hand. no. The ten is the one place it can't possibly be. In the deck that you've been holding since you thought of it. Turn them face up and spread through them one by one. Ten of clubs. Damn. But how did it get? He put it on your leg, didn't he? He did. It funny. was on there. So but now it's in here. I saw him put it there, and then he moved his hand. I thought he would like flick it somewhere. Wow. I gotta marry me like a producer. I can keep he always after. Sorry, baby. I'm taking. Ah, <laughs> just get out. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding, let's totally go. Come on. Yeah.